welcome back and good afternoon uh, in this uh, video we're going to try a little different experiment since I've been talking about uh, crystal batteries and uh, lately um, we're going to try a, a little crystal battery experiment uh, and uh, what's the the main difference between crystal batteries and regular batteries our regular battery batteries are uh, acids or alkalines uh, for an electrolyte and uh, with crystal batteries you're not using acids or alkalines you're using a salt and and salts are made from uh, from acids like uh, magnesium sulfate for instance is a magnesium uh, salt made from sulfuric acid so what I've got here is some uh, magnesium citrate of course and so that's magnesium it's in a citrate form which is made from citric acid which is what we're working with here so I thought it would, might be a good uh, addition now this is a, 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 a supplement you can buy and take and I, I get a lot of my supplements from uh, pure bulk and it's interesting that it says uh, here the supports energy production well we're going to find out if it supports some energy production in the bio cell. So what I'm going to do here is take a little bit of magnesium citrate, about a gram or something. A little bit here, not a lot. It's probably about a gram and pop it into that little cup there. And then we're going to take a little bit of our uh, citric acid and borax solution here from the last experiment and we're going to pour a little bit in there and then swirl it around here mix it good okay now we've got our uh, Electrodes are all nice and clean. Electrodes. We're going to take a little bit of our lime and titanium dioxide from the last experiment, and we're going to paint a drop of it on our anode here. Nice even coat if I can. Okay, and then we're going to put our separator paper on there like that and then we're going to put a few drops of our magnesium citrate and citric acid on there another reason I wanted to try magnesium citrate is because magnesium is used in incredible amounts in the, in our bodies, like uh, 275 chemical reactions require magnesium. Okay, so now take our clean piece of graph oil, put it on there, and see what kind of voltage we get out of this. Let's get it on the millivolts right there, so we can see if it's climbing or dropping easy. And we've got, whoa, look at there, 128.86. So there's our, and, but we got a slow drop on it. And I'm pretty uh, sure, and see, we had the same thing every time before we put the oily cathode material on there, we reached a, a voltage, and then the voltage was slowly dropping. And I'm pretty sure that that's because when you put the acid in the cell, you throw off the, the chemical uh, balance in there and the pH is off and then the uh, it slowly discharges to build up an oxide layer on there which makes it more alkaline and uh, balances out the, uh, the the pH in the cell and it will probably just continue to discharge until it builds up and when we short it out that uh, hastens up the uh, oxide uh, build up on the, on the anode and then we saw that the, our voltage kept getting uh, going higher uh, as we discharged it and let it recharge each time. And that's my theory anyway. So 
let's see what kind of amps we got out of this. The last time, let's see, the first time we did it, we got like 1.7 amps, and then when we added the alkaline, we got 5.3, I think. And this time, we're going to see what we get out of this one. Okay. And let's see if we can see that good. And we got a little less. That's 2.1 or so. So we got more voltage, but we got less amps. Uh-huh. So, so far, the, the, uh, the salt has actually hurt the production. Although it did give us a little more uh, voltage on there. So let's see if it's if it's self-charging back up. Well, it's charging up nice. Back up to 110. See? But it's not going back up. It's not going to make it all the way back up to uh, 128. So, so we can see that the the uh, the salts didn't help. It's, and now on, that's on the that's without our uh, material on the cathode. Now let's add the cathode oil base microspheres, and we'll see what happens. Maybe a totally different story. Now, it may not. And of course, I haven't done this experiment before, beforehand, so I don't know what's going to happen. I like doing my experiments live. That way, you all find out exactly what I'm finding out when I find it out. Okay, now. Let's check our voltage and stuff and see what happens. Okay. Yeah. Then we're back, our voltage is going up. And let's see. See, now it's climbing, it's not dropping at all. Okay. So we're going to go to one, there's 120, 121. Okay, now let's check our voltage, and I think the last time, our, our amps, I mean, the last time we got uh, 20, 25 milliamps was the most. So now let's see if, how that compares to this one. 18. But you notice it started uh, low and then ramped up to 18 before it started dropping back off? That's probably because of the salt in it. I'm guessing it's kind of buffering the system is what I'm is what I'm thinking. Let's do that again. Well, this time it started higher and came back down, but it hadn't been discharged or fully recharged either. I don't think. Let's see how fast it recharges now. Going up fast. Be careful I don't push my electrodes through the graphite. Yep, it's climbing up pretty nice. Looks like it'll make it all the way back up at the rate it's going. But you can see it's, it slows down a, a little bit. I think the recharge, the self-charge was the fastest without, was faster without the solvent. And we got a little bit higher voltage too. So, uh, Looks like salts are not what you want to put in your biocell. But we'll see what happens. It, that may change too. Let's discharge it again and see what happens. It's going to make it back to the 120 mark. Alright, now let's run another discharge on it and see what kind of we get. 5, 7, okay, less. Yeah, looks like the salts are buffering the system to me. Okay, thank you for watching, and I hope this was informative. I know I learned something from it. Thanks again.